Invincible Season 2 Part 1 is going to be streaming very, very soon on Prime Video. This Friday, I believe, actually. I don't know how many episodes are going to be dropping. Is it the whole thing on Friday or if it's an episodic week by week? But either way, the first part of the second season starts. And it's only four episodes, and I got to see all four episodes, and I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about it. Albeit spoiler-free, don't want to give anything away for those who are excited. In the first season, things ended on an extremely bitter note. We had Omni-Man show his true colors to the entire world, that he is actually not the savior that he is hailed as. He is someone who is a weapon of mass destruction, pretty much. He's come from a species that was said to be a peacekeeping one, but actually it's a annihilation one. It's one that wants to go everywhere, plant their flag, and conquer. Eventually, after he almost kills his own son, but he's already devastated a lot of other things and killed a bunch of people he disappears and so second season starts off with the note which is trying to deal with what's happened and going forward and a lot of the things that the characters are doing in this season not just relegated to mark himself like he's got his own thing going but also stuff that's going on with the other characters the other heroes that we've gotten to know like adam eve all of that stuff is what this season focuses on which i think is a very organic way of continuing the story forward because you have to sort of deal with the repercussions of what just happened over there. It's easy to sort of look at it as a, okay, the villain won that one time, but you know, the hero will stop uh, once they, like next time there's anything like that. Next time is a lot to wish for. And it's in a world where next times are not necessarily victories. I find the best superhero stories oftentimes do that with its characters. They're able to break them down to a point where you're sort of able to understand the emotional side of things in more than any way. And I think it's effective also because whenever there's action sequences and whenever characters are in peril, you care about them. And Mark is a character who's been through so much that you can't help but feel bad for the guy. He's not always a perfect person, but then no one really is. Again, another thing about heroism that sometimes flies under the radar and something that should come up more often is that no one's perfect. And as this season progresses, you're seeing that with every character, but you're also seeing that with the situations that they're dealing with. There's so much pain then so much suffering that's been caused because of the consequences of the first season. There's so much time you spend, especially with Mark's mom and stuff that's going on in the household because there's a distance between them. He's about to head off to college and so he's not going to be seeing her for a while and vice versa. And she's still living with that pain and she'll break down every now and then. And I know we're focusing on that so much despite the fact that there's action in this season. There absolutely is. There's an there's a component to it which involves what life could be. I don't want to go too much into that, but there is an aspect to it where certain characters are like, what if things could change a certain way? There's enough happening that there's more threats on the way for Mark to deal with very, very soon, as he's also trying to go over the moral ambiguity of whether or not he should become more like his father in terms of, you know, power levels or, you know, just try to find a way to, you know, uh, move past it, which includes doing more missions for Cecil and the rest of the, you know, bureau that that's uh, running stuff. So that means he's going on some missions that every time he gets an opportunity to go, that's what he does to sort of cool off. He takes a beating at every time he goes out there and every now and then, you know, he'll come back looking bruised and battered, but it's something that he did to not think about the rest of the pain. I think the writing of season two is very good. It's very poignant. There's some great character stuff in here. There's a couple of detours that they deliberately do to look into what else is there. And those are some emotionally impactful moments as well. It makes sense that they cut this into two parts because season two is a lot in terms of trying to, you know, get everything in at once, you know, like, and, and it does have moments in there where you want to just kind of go, okay, let's sit with this for a while and then we'll go into the rest of it. The creators of the show, especially Robert Kirkman, has said that exact thing is why there's a split in seasons. I think that's a great idea because you want some time to kind of, you know, take between how things go in these four episodes 
and what's to come in the later episodes. So I think that's a very good idea. I think it's animated beautifully once again. Gory, crazy action sequences as you'd expect. Some really great comedic moments and dark comedy just like the first season had. The positives that were there in that first season very much carry forward into this one. Everything from the soundtrack to even the way they've handled the title cards this time which is not exactly like the first season. Like they've done some some changes in like how they're doing that which I thought was really really cool uh, and I'm not gonna say what too much about that you guys check it out for yourselves but there's some great stuff that's going on over there as well and I really had a great time watching it I actually binged the last couple of episodes because I just was so invested in where they were gonna go with it next and I am genuinely excited to see what's going to be in Season 2, Part 2, whenever that drops in 2024, hopefully early 2024, so that, you know, the patients can be rewarded. And I think for fans of Invincible who've been waiting for a while to see the rest of the story play out, I think you're going to be pretty satisfied with what they do. Like I said, it's very poignant stuff. There's a lot of emotional heaviness to it, but... It's needed. It's needed. You know, it's that kind of story. It's like where we left off. There's no way you don't go on without having to process all of that, which is why it's sort of like you're working in tandem with the characters that are in there and their relationships and so on. I'm not going to give a grade just yet because, again, it's part one of season two. I think I'll wait until season two, part two to give you guys the rest of the score. But Needless to say, I'm very happy with Season 2, Part 1. I had a great time watching it. I hope you guys enjoy it as well. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below whenever you guys get a chance to see it. I know this is an early review, so not too many people have got a chance yet. But whenever you do, let me know. Or what did you think of the first season of Invincible? Let me know accordingly in the comments. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Look forward to more videos very, very soon. As always, if you like this, please do subscribe. And very happy streaming to everyone. Wow, that was terrible. Hold on. There we go.